What's up, YouTube? I'm in the shop today, and I come across this conundrum. Not really a conundrum, but just uh, something that maybe you may come across, and maybe you may not, when you got to make multiples of something, and how do you do it? Uh, how do you go about it? Let's go into it. Let's get into it. So, this here is a, what will be a window frame for the sweeper car, right? I had to make, uh, this is the old window trim. I'm not going to copy it exactly. This is the old one. I'm not going to copy it exactly, okay? I just don't have that tooling. What I do have is something to make this profile and how that's going to look is that's how it's going to look in the window frame right here how do you make them they're so tiny what what's you know the most efficient way to make them I have 16 windows to make so do the math uh, each window has four pieces of this trim and it's roughly, I don't know, 30, say each piece is 30 inches. So I need 90 inches per window. Do that math. <laughs> Times 16. Plus a little extra, right? That's a lot, man. That's a lot of this stuff to make. How do you do it? Well, let's go see. Let's go see. So here's our friend, the Thin Rip Jig, right? He's our friend, man. He makes this process easier. Especially when you have to do so much of something. Remember this? This is basically some strip from the outside trim, okay? Ripped it from a wide board, got all these thin pieces, strips, using the thin rip, right? Then I take it over to the router table and profile both edges, okay? Obviously when you profile you're running face down, okay? It's important to use feather strips to get even pressure along the way of the molding. Do both sides, then you essentially have two pieces of molding. Then, let's go over here. You come over here. I'm going to set you up in the fence, in the uh, tripod. And I'm going to make a cut. And this, you see, is where you start making that molding. This is a time saver. Just think, if you had to make this mold, cut this molding out, you can't really cut it out uh, safely by running this through and cutting out your pieces. It's just not safe. It's not safe, and you, you notice here that I'm using a thin blade. I'm using a little seven and a quarter inch, uh, which would be uh, for like a circular saw. A little seven and a quarter inch blade. It's thin kerf. It's like less than a sixteenth of an inch. Less waste. Less everything with this type of a blade. Okay, it's a rip blade, but yeah, you can use them in your big table saw, 10 inch saw. Yep, you can use these little blades, no problem. Your depth, your height of cut is going to be diminished because your blade is smaller. But let me set you up. I'm going to cut a piece, okay? It's going to get a little noisy, but it'll be alright. 
So you notice this blade's a little quieter because it's a smaller blade, right? So as you're cutting, right, you need to apply pressure to the fence and keep it held down, okay? And you need to stay away from the blade, obviously, right? Let's go. Push stick. It's important to use a push stick. Right? So there's our molding. There's our waste. We can, and I did, run again to make another piece. Yeah, it's a little close, but I've done it, and you can do it. So let me talk to you a little bit about safety. All right. You need to be safe, obviously, around your tool, and you need to be comfortable around your machines, okay? You need to know your machines and be comfortable operating your machines. If you're not comfortable operating your machines, you're not going to do it safely. Yeah, the table saw is a dangerous, probably one of the dangerous, most dangerous machines in your shop, okay? And you need to treat it with the utmost respect. Pay attention to what you're doing all the time. Don't be distracted. You can't be talking to people. Um, you need to know what you're doing and where your hands are at all times. If you're safe around your machine, you become... I don't want to say one with your machine, but you know your machine. And you're more comfortable operating your machinery and that's the way that you make small cuts like this because if you're not comfortable making this cut you're not going to do it it's you're going to get hurt it's just not going to come out right but having these tools the push stick right this thin strip because the thin strip you're constantly i wouldn't want to be pushing this small piece through the fence side of the table saw all the time. Even though you may get the same results and uh, achieve the same, can, um, what's the word? Um, uh, thickness, um, can, I can't think of that word, Jerry. Oh well, you, you kind of understand where I'm going with this, right? It's better to be out here with it, right? Use this thin rip, stri no, thin strip rip jig. <laughs> That's a mouthful. As always, uh, be safe in your shop, on your job site, whatever you're doing. Thanks for watching. God bless. Be well. See ya.